Hello guys, I am back with episode two of Let's Talk About It. So you guys are, well, you've obviously seen episode one and I was pretty happy with the response that I got, not gonna lie. So for video two, I'm basically going to be answering some of y'all questions. So for episode two, we're basically going to be doing the same thing, just a little different this time. This time I just asked you guys to ask me some questions and I'm going to be doing my hair and finishing up my makeup. Yeah, so let me stop talking and let's just get right into it. Um, as you can already tell, I had already did my eyeshadow. I had already did my eyeshadow off camera because that's just tedious. It's just tedious at that point. So I did my eyeshadow, did my brows, um, so yeah, I'm gonna do my hair last, but anyway, let me just do a quick little BTS behind the scenes for the gram, so y'all can, you know, anyway, Ooh. anyway, so I'm gonna be reading some of these questions that you guys sent me, let me just see what we got, let me see what we got, um, Alright, I think I have other questions. So, for the first question. Okay, so I got this really random question. But it's not really random because I had got this question a lot. And this question says, why do you only wear your natural nails? It's pretty and refreshing, just curious. To answer that, I'm going to say, I used to wear fake nails a lot, but then I stopped wearing them because I just felt like I couldn't do anything with them. Like, I felt very, like, non-mobile. Is that a word to say? Like, I felt like I couldn't, like, pick up anything. I felt so useless with my nails. And yes, I wore nails before, but I don't know. It was just something about it. And am I the only one that feels this way? But when I was younger, when I had got nails, I felt like I was too grown. Like, it's just something about wearing nails that make you feel a little like, like y'all can relate, right? Does it make you go like, I, I, I don't know. It makes me feel weird. Like I feel too grown. So what I just used to moisturize my face was the Charlotte Tilbury. You guys have already seen this bad boy. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream. My holy grail. Anyway, next question. Can you please give us the runway content? I promise you guys, like, that runway content is coming. Like, I've been trying to find someone else that's a little bit more available around my time to shoot which is hard for me because I only shoot with my best friend like I don't shoot with no one else because my best friend and I we 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 have fluidity like he knows exactly what I'm going to do he knows exactly the move I'm going to make he knows exactly how to capture my vision so for me to find someone else to to shoot my like my, my runway is kind of hard for me I'm like and as well I'm kind of just like sucking it up and waiting for him to become available but at the same time that's not cool because the longer I wait the longer it will take for me to get content to get content out so yeah um I did record a video with him a few days ago in the city and I will be posting that very, very, very soon. So, yeah. Um, for my eyes, I'm, the, I'm using the Estee Lauder Double Wear Radiant Cream Concealer. Yeah, this concealer is the bomb. This is some really, really good, good, good concealer. Like, I absolutely love this. I kind of put too much on. Usually when I put this concealer on, I use a little bit, but I'm sitting here talking and I put way too much. So now my under eye is going to look very orangey. But that's 
okay because I'm going to be using another concealer to brighten it up. Anyway, so yeah, that's to answer your question with the runway content. It's coming. Like, I promise you, that content is like my first love. That's probably the only content that I like to do that brings me real, real joy. Because a lot of people don't know this, but when we shoot, it's a lot of work. Like, I'm going to take you guys behind the scenes one day and show you how I prep and get ready for these, uh, these runway shoots. Like, he does the recording. But behind the whole thing, I got to find the, the right music I like. I got to get into the right mindset. I got to tune out the public and focus on him and focus on myself. I got to find the outfits. I got to find the locations. I got to find the music. I got to edit. I do all of this. And I don't say this as a way of complaining. I'm saying this because it's my passion and I love it. I'm very passionate about the content I put out. And I like I could easily find any videographer or any photographer to like shoot me content and just put it out there. But I'm a girl that values quality over quantity. Like I'm just not gonna put out just random content because you guys are asking for it. I only put out things that I know for a fact that's gonna do good and it's it, it was done well, if that makes sense. Like, I'll only put it out if I know that this is good quality, this is good content. I'm going to be using the Lancome Tint, Tint Edal Ultra Wear. And this is in the shade 420. 420, y'all. And as you guys can see, she's a little bright. She's a little bright. But that's okay because this is going to help balance out that orange that I put um, under my eye and by my lip and my chin and it's going to give me a really nice caramel soft eye like the coverage is not heavy this feels really really nice like I actually like this let's take a second to let me get in a little closer okay Y'all see that? Look how nice that is. And of course, we're just gonna buff out that edge. See that? There's something on my lens. Ooh. Did I? Ooh. Y'all, is that me or is my lens act looking a little funky? Ooh, no. Ooh, lens is looking a little. Guys, give me a second. Whew. All right, we're recording. I have to fix that. That was looking a little dust. But anyway, before I was interrupted by the dust, um, where do I leave off at? The concealer. Yeah, the concealer is really nice. She's nicely balanced. And look at that. Looks good. Good, yeah? Prrr. Okay, next question. Um, let's see, what questions do we have? Okay, so the next question I have, um, this is a good one. It says, are you happy? Are you fulfilled? If you could change one thing, what would it be? Well, let me answer the first one. Am I happy? I am 100% happy. Like, life is too short to be angry and holding grudges and just being upset. Life is beautiful. Like, I, I wake up every day and I realize, wow, life is good. Like, I don't find anything to complain about. Because there's so much more going on in the world. Like, like, there's so much more going on in the world to complain about and worry about. I find happiness in all the small things. But most importantly, I find happiness in myself. 
And I think that's all you can do. Because once you realize that you can make yourself happy, you are happy for, like, for you, and you find happiness in yourself, I don't think there's nothing that can, like... Oh, that is looking harsh. That's looking, that's looking deadly. That's looking a little harsh. But, again, I'm going to blend that out. Um, as I was saying, there's nothing that can stop your happiness. Your true, ooh, your true happiness. I know this looks harsh right now. It looks a little much. But trust me, when I add the foundation, it's going to blend nicely. Anyway, the next part. Are you fulfilled? Um, not completely. There's a lot of things that I'm that I'm still working on to feel that fulfillment. Like there's still a lot of places. Like when I say that, there's still a lot of there's still a lot of places I want to visit. There's still a lot of things I want to see. I don't feel completely fulfilled. No. Because as a human being, we're always looking for more. We're always looking for the next bit of excitement. And for me, that's traveling. I haven't seen all the places I want to see. I, I don't have a lot of friends. And I want to change that. I want to make a lot of friends. For me, that would, that would give me some fulfillment to start with. Traveling more. Making, making more friends. And just put myself out there. So to answer that question, no. Um, I don't feel fulfilled yet. Because there's a lot more things I want to do. There's a lot of things that I know that I can do. Such as being on the runway. I will feel some type of fulfillment if I can do that. Um, being on the big billboard as Melinda Berry by myself. Yes. Um, anyway, so the next part is, if you could change one thing, what would it be? Nothing. Seeing how my life is going now and seeing how things are panning out, I wouldn't change a thing. I am very happy with how my life is going. I'm very... I'm, I'm happy. I'm currently just happy. Like, I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't change how things went too hot. I wouldn't change how things happened post-show. No. Oh, for um, foundation, I'm using the Estee Lauder Double Wear. Oh, not the finger. The Estee Lauder Double Wear. Yeah. Anyway, but no, I wouldn't change anything. Nah, I'm happy in my life. Okay, ooh, this question is really good. Someone's asked, what is the appropriate age to settle down and be with someone serious? Oh, that's really good. I, for, personally, for me, I would say you're late 20s. Because by that time, you lived a little. You got to, like, experience your 20s. You got to do a lot of fun things. Oh, wait. Y'all see that? See how it blend? Y'all see how that blended? You've got to experience your 20s. You didn't feel like you were missing out on anything. Um... Yeah, I would say your late 20s to going into 30s. Or just when you feel as though the time is right. Because there is no rush. There is no rush to settle down. When you find the one that's actually the one, then you will know when you are ready to make that step and that commitment to go the long haul. There is no timeline on it. There is no age limit on it. It isn't. 
When you know, you know. Like, for me, personally, I'm so sick and tired of hearing people say, oh, you need to be in your 20s and have a serious relationship and you need to get married by the time you're 30 and you need to have a kid because when you get, like, your, your 30s, no one's going to want... What? I'm just so sick of that whole no one's going to want you when you're in your late 30s. Honey, you see me? I'm 28, going on 29. And I look like this. And I feel good. I am in no rush. At all. You shouldn't be in no rush to settle down. At all. Okay, sis? Next question. Did you go to college? Melinda Barry did not go to college. But there was once upon a time, I was in the process of attending college. But it never happened. And that's a long story. I'm going to make it short. I had applied to go to college over in Denver, Colorado. And I was this close to getting there. Um, I did all the paperwork, the, pro the, the whole process, but there was an issue with funding. I didn't have enough money to afford to go to college. And yes, I did apply for scholarships. I applied for a lot of things, um, loans, stuff like that. And I don't think I, I don't think I really got any. I probably got one once like loan or something and it wasn't enough to get me to the next step of going to college and I don't come from a wealthy family I don't come from a lot of money I don't come actually don't come from money at all I don't so to answer your to answer your question no I didn't go to college didn't have enough money and when I had to come to the realization that it wasn't going to happen my heart broke. My heart broke tremendously because I was chatting with the girl who was going to be my, my, my roommate and she was so excited. She was so happy. We were like coming up with ideas on what we were going to like style our dorm and I had to tell her like, sorry sis, but I'm not going to make it. And she understood. She still went, of course. And yeah. That was that. Didn't have proper funding to make it to college. So I never went. But look at me now, baby. Look at me now. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Ooh. Next question. This one says, well, tell us how you started in the first place. What motivated you to be where you were before? Ooh. That one right there touches my soul. That one right there for me touches my soul. Because I'm going to be upfront and honest with you guys. Younger Melinda was trying to be a model in Philadelphia. Younger Mel was trying to make it big and wanted to have a name for herself. I went out to a lot of casting calls. I went out to a lot of go sees, but I didn't have I didn't have the proper guidance. I didn't have like the height. Didn't have really have the look. I, I I was always comparing myself to all the girls that I would look at and go to these go sees with, and be like, "This girl's gonna get it." I know, like I knew for a fact I wasn't going to get it. By sizing up my competition and looking at the girls around me, I was like, yeah, there's not a chance I'm going to get this. And nine times out of ten, I was right. I didn't get it. So I became very unmotivated. Then, to make matters worse, I, well, not worse, but when I moved to New York City, when I moved to New York City, 
I end up going out to the casting calls out here thinking, oh, this would be easy. This would be fine. Boy, oh boy, did I have a rude awakening. It was not at all that easy. It wasn't easy at all. Because the girls out in New York City, they ain't playing. These girls out here, they ain't no joke. Little old me, I'm over here like, oh, I got this stuff handled. I got into their room and saw my competition and walked right out. After that, I completely stopped with going to casting calls. I completely just discontinued myself from doing that. I was over it. I was over trying to meet their standards. I was over trying to be what they wanted. And at that point, why, why, why am I reaching? I'm just bring it over here. At that point, I was like, okay, Mel, I know modeling is my passion. I know I want to be someone. I know I can do this. What do I need to do? So what I did do was have me time. I sat back and just discontinued myself from that unrealistic world of what a person should look like and be like to be accepted for a job. Okay? So what I did was just basically start taking my own pictures, creating my own world, creating a world that's fit for me and a world that I can be happy in. And that's exactly what I did. And to make it better, I ended up meeting my best friend who also enjoys photography and videography. He was also a big help in helping me discover who I am now and helping me become this confident person that I am now. Oh, for highlighter, I'm gonna be using these Sophia and Mabel. This is a cute highlighter, let me show you guys. Look at this highlighter. It's cute, let me just get a little slatch. Oh, not the crusty hands. Ooh, I'm gonna give y'all like a little bit of a swatch. Isn't that nice? Look at that. And it's really cute. Like it's, it's like a pinky strawberry highlighter. It's really nice. It's good on the chocolate skin. Anyway, so yeah, me and my best friend it helps me gain my confidence. We were both just interested in building each other up and creating this vision that we both have for each other. So yeah. I hope that answers your question, sis. Um, here's another random question. How tall are you? Guys, I am 5'3". I know I mentioned this a few times on my posts. I'm 5'3". I am itty bitty. Um, next question. What are your goals at the moment? My biggest goal at the moment is keep inspiring young, beautiful women all over the world. I want to keep on giving you guys this confidence and this inspiration and this fierceness and this just like aura of greatness that we all have. That's my goal is to keep doing what I'm doing now, but bigger and striving for better. My goal is to keep inspiring all the beautiful girls out in the world. Showing them fierceness, fearless, showing them fearlessness, keeping them inspired, showing them that they can do it too. There is no limit to what you can do. Only thing that can limit you is you, all right? And I'm saying this because I had limit myself. I had limited myself by a thousand, all right? Because I've gone through it. I've done it. I've been in dark places. Made it out. Question. I don't even know if I'm 
the air to this. Y'all, wow. 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 Someone said, look, I got the wrong palette out. This, this pressure really caught me off guard. Someone said, were you and Robert dating? You guys are so cute together. Robert and I were never, ever dating. We are great friends that have a great bond and great chemistry. That's all, ooh. That's all, that is all that we are. We are good friends that love to laugh and have great humor. So yeah, to answer that. And yeah, Robert and I do look cute together, but we ain't, we ain't, we ain't doing that. All right, since we ain't doing that. Robert is so cool. We just literally get along so well. Like it's, it's really rare to find someone who you really like and that gets your humor and is just as silly as you are. Like I love that. I love that about Robert. He's a funny, giggly, tall, British, English guy. A girl love that. Robert and I are good friends. And we like to keep it that way. Oh, this you guys, these questions are so good. This next one, this next one says, I'm not saying you need a man, but will you ever look for love again? Yes. Melinda Berry will definitely be looking for love again. Right now? No. Because I'm too much of a hopeless romantic. That's what I am. I fall in love way too easily. Like, I could talk to someone and be like, ah, oh. I'm obsessed. Done. Obsessed. I start wanting to text you, see what you're doing. I want to hang out with you, hang out with you every day. Like, sis, relax. Um, but yeah. I would definitely look for love again. But right now, Melinda needs to focus on herself and her career. Which is like such a cliche thing to say because it is possible to be in love and be with someone while you're on your journey of having a career or having a career and having a man. Like that's also possible. But right now, I just want to be Melinda. Barry, Melrose, whatever. I just want to, I just want to be selfish for a tiny bit and love me and focus on me right now. Because apparently me giving so much love and being so lovey and open always backfire. So, oh, here's one that you guys have been very curious about. Will you be moving to L.A.? I'm currently looking for places out in L.A. Um, and I say this because during New York City in the winter, it's not a vibe. New York City in the winter is not a vibe. It's, a, it's, it's cold. It's nasty. It's not fun. It's not fun. So, now that I know what I want to do, moving to L.A. seems like a, a thing that's going to happen. But I'm not going to be living out there permanently. I'm going to be living out there for at least six months during this winter time here in New York and living out in LA during the summertime there. Cause, but I don't know. Does it make sense? Oh, this is about to get really bright in here and I don't have a blind, so it's about to get really bright. Um, as I was saying, what was I saying? It's really easy to get caught up in that LA lifestyle. And I'm not about the fakeness that goes on in LA. I'm not about the he say, she say, who blah, blah, blah in LA. It, it kind of scares me in a, a little bit. Uh, it kind of scares me in a little way because I know, like, I'm New York tough. 
Like, I know for a fact I can go out to L.A. and hold my own down. But I'm also a softie. And I wear my heart out on my sleeve. And I don't mean that in a romantic way. I mean that in a way of making friends. Because I don't have friends. So the moment I build this small connection with someone, I'm like, oh yeah, this person's going to be my friend forever. Or I can see myself building a strong connection with this person. Blah, 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 blah. And then you get backstabbed. I'm just like, I'll be so sad. That's the only reason I'm a little put off, put off with L.A. is because of that. And I feel like I would be so hurt and upset with people trying to play me. So, yeah. Guys, I'm so sorry. The, the light is coming in really bright here. And it's kind of making me look a little washed out. Um, maybe I can darken it. Let me see. So guys, my camera had overheated again and I'm back. Uh, yeah. So I'm not quite sure where we left off at. Story of my life. But I'm going to hop into ask, to answering another question while I apply some lashes. And these are from Lily Lashes in the style Lux. These are my favorite, favorite um, lashes. And Lux is one of my favorite, favorite styles to wear because they're super natural and has this cute little flare at the end. Y'all gonna see. Y'all gonna see. Anyway, question. Someone asked. Oh, wait. There was actually a question that I saw that was really good. Hold on. Let me get this lash on. Guys, this eye always gives me a hard time with putting on a lash. Like, I don't like this. Like, it looks so slumped. Oh, you guys are, like, witnessing me struggle with this lash. This is a struggle. Anyway, while I'm struggling with this lash, let's answer the next question. Have you ever been ghosted? Ah, uh, once. I've been ghosted once. But this was years ago. Like, we're talking like 18-year-old Mel. Yeah. So, um, me and this guy that I used to go to school with, we were chatting for a little bit. And it was his idea to hang out and go to a movies. So I'm sitting there. I'm just like, all right, well, I'm dressed. I'm looking good and cute. You know, little Mel doing it, bobbing and weaving. And we agreed to meet for like, I think four. Four, like in the afternoon. And I'm sitting there and I'm waiting and I'm waiting. I'm sending a text. I'm like, yeah. Like, you coming? You coming through? Nothing. And at this point, it's 4.30. And I'm still waiting. And waiting. And waiting. Nothing. Now it's 5.30. At this point, I'm not interested. And I'm just like, all right, well, he's not going to show up. I heard nothing from him at all. Till this day. Still ain't heard nothing. Dang it. So, yes, I've been ghosted once in my life. Yeah, once. Pretty sh pretty crappy, you know, to be ghosted. Have I ever ghosted anyone? No. I don't believe in ghosting people. I'm very upfront. And, like, if I don't want to meet up with you or if I don't want to hang, I'm going to let you know. That's just that. Because I believe in being transparent and being upfront and being honest and being, like, very cumulative. Is that a word? Cumulative. Yeah, we'll go, we'll go over with that. All right, let me struggle with this lash one more again. Come on, sis, pull through for me. Okay. Yes, ish. It's looking sloppy, but it is what it is. 
That'll do it. <laughs> that'll do it. You ever see that TikTok voice when he goes, ooh, that'll do it now. <laughs> that's, that's my sound right there. Anyway, okay, so this question is, when are you starting your podcast? Just know it's going to be lit. Guys, um, I'm not sure when I'm going to start a podcast. I feel like me doing this YouTube video and chatting, this is kind of me putting out a filler to see if I could do a podcast. If a podcast is truly what I'm interested in. So this is just a little filler, you know, to see if it'll be something I'm interested in doing. So that is to be continued. Also, you know, if I was to do a podcast, I would need to have guests. Well, not need to, but I feel like I would want like some guest appearances. And who would those guests be? I could definitely see myself having um, Asada. Asada? How you say it? Asada? I could see myself having Asada on there. Trina. Um, the other influencer. Her name is Noor. Not not your Noor. No, I think that's her name. I'm, I think. I can see her on there. She's like, has no hair, but she's like fearless. She's like, she call us sisters and besties. I love her content. I can see her on there. I can see my boy Joey being on the podcast. That will be a vibe. A total vibe. So, yes. Okay. I'm done with the makeup. Okay. Now we're gonna attack the hair. But let me just let this dry first because, ooh child. Oh, guys, my hair, I had washed it already. So the hair is washed. She's soft, she's hydrated. Ooh, and the airing has left the premises. Alright, give me a second, y'all. I gotta find my airpiece. I I'm not sure what I wanna do with my hair at the moment. Cause Sunday I go to the hair salon and I'm getting my hair done. I might just get knotless box braids. I'm not sure. But guys, what should I do with my hair? Well, right now, I mean it's not like y'all can answer me. Like it's soft. Speaking of soft, let me put some serum. Y'all already know I'm about to use my pattern scalp serum. Y'all already know I'm about to use this because y'all saw it in the last video. Oh, not her. Not her oozing out. Anyway, let's get this in the scalp because we don't waste product. So I'm just going to put this in my scalp like this. Just to keep the scalp hydrated, ladies. Keep that scalp clean and hydrated, okay? You can't grow your hair if your scalp is, is dirty and has a bunch of built up product in it. You got to give your scalp time to breathe. I will say this. The reason why I have my hair out a lot lately is because I want to give a break from wigs. And I say that because I wear wigs a lot, a whole lot. Because for me, it's the easiest thing to do to my hair when I don't feel like being bothered with it. Because as a natural hair, curly hair girl, I don't know what to do with my hair. I don't know what hairstyles. It's like when your hair is at a certain length, it's like, if it's not long enough, you can't do certain looks. If it's not thick enough, you can't pull off certain looks. Like I'm at an awkward stage right now with my hair. Like it's not short, it's not long, it's like, like this. This is just how it is. And I don't quite know what to do with it. Do you guys think I should do Bantu knots? 
Should I do some Bantus? Should I do two puff, like two puff balls? Should I do two ponytails? Or should the sis do Bantus? If I do a band, if I do some Bantus, this video is gonna be so long. I don't think you guys understand. This video is gonna be so long. Let me think about this. Ugh. I don't know what I'm gonna do with my hair. Oh, but before I keep blabbing away, the reason why I'm giving my hair a break from wigs. I started to go thin around my edges right here from the wigs like before it wasn't bad but now as you can see let me see this right here can you guys see that like right here is thin right here is thin like all right here is thin and I, I, I'm not used to that. I'm not used to a thin, thin headline. And it's even on this side as well. Like, let me see. Like right here, it's, it's a little thin. And I don't like that. I don't like even thin edges. For, for the longest time, I've been good at keeping my hair well-maintained and healthy. But I will say, the last time I was in London, I wasn't taking care of my hair as well as I should have because it was so easy to just wake up do my makeup pop a wig on don't even think about it versus like having a natural hair out and my girls know when I say this when you do your makeup and you're about to go out that night and if you don't already have an idea of what you're going to do with your hair your, your real hair it can really make or break your night or day like, y'all feel me when I say that. So, for me, I couldn't risk it. I couldn't risk having a bad hair day. Especially on a day where I had plans to go out. Or if I'm going to have, like, lunch or meet someone. I don't want to spend an hour and a half fighting with my hair. And risk being late. So, it was so easy for me to just pop a wig on and go. With guaranteed, with guaranteed time that I was going to be out that dough. So, yeah, I neglected my hair a little bit. And now I'm paying for it. I'm paying for it, y'all. But it's not as bad as it looks. It's not. I'm being dramatic because, you know, I'm Melinda. I'm dramatic. But, yeah, it's not as bad as it looks because, you know, I still have a head full of hair. Um... I mean, because like, there are people out there that do struggle with their natural hair. I do get a lot of DMs and questions in regards to you guys asking me, how do I maintain my curly hair? How do I keep my hair looking healthy? Low manipulation. That's what I would say. Protective styles. Keep your hair moisturized, hydrated, and keep your scalp clean. Because think about it, where does your hair grow? From the roots, all right? Your hair grows from the roots. And how do you stimulate hair growth? By massaging the scalp, keeping your scalp clean, hydrating your hair, putting in moisturizers, um, protective styles. I constantly wear protective styles. As you, as you guys see, I wear a lot of wigs. And I love my wigs. I love me some Naomi. I love my Bobbiana. I love Melrose. Like, I love my wigs. And yes, those are the names I gave my wigs. Yes. But there are times where I'm just like, all right, I need a break. Because I can't keep popping these wigs on. Blah, 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 blah. I'm neglecting my hair. And then if I don't want to wear wigs, I turn to braids. And braids are the easiest, easiest protective styles you can do. Honestly. Ooh. I'm just shaking my hair because I, I still don't know what to do with my hair. So yeah. So Sunday, I will be doing another protective style. I will be getting braids. I'm thinking about getting box, uh, knotless box braids because that's the easiest hairstyle for me. And I can switch it up with style. Like, I can style it. You know, like I can style the hairstyle. Um, I could get cornrows, but it's still a little cold out, and I don't want my scalp cold. 
You know? Oh, this wasn't even open. And I don't want my scalp cold. So I'm going to hold off on getting um, cornrows until it's like really hot out. And my scalp can take it. Ooh, that's nice. Y'all, this, ser this serum is so nice on the scalp. Oh, this is so good. God, that is nice. Whew, that's real nice. Anyway, let me put this away. Um, hairstyle, hairstyle, hairstyle. I'm thinking. Okay, I have an idea. I feel like I have an idea. I saw something. I'm gonna do like a cornrows, but like not like neat cornrows, just like messy twists to the back. Let's see if we can do this, y'all. We're on this journey together. <gasps> All right. And yes, I do have a comb. I could part the hair if I wanted to with a comb, but I don't want to use a comb. I kind of want that messy looking part vibe, if it makes sense. So I'm going to take that and do this. Let's twist. Twist. Y'all, this is going to be a mess. Well, that's okay. <laughs> Look at that. Look. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Oh, jeez. Okay. Anyway, we just... We're admitted this far. We're just gonna keep going. We're just gonna keep going with it. Now, Melinda. Oh, my God. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta see it through. We gotta see it through, y'all. We gonna, we gonna see this through. We gonna see this through. Because, look, look, I know a hair professional. I'm not. I'm not. I'm really not. But I'm just going to wing this and create something from this. I'm going to leave some of this out, like a little curly spot. No, no, maybe I'll leave this out. Ooh, I like, ooh. I'm gonna leave some of the cur are we are we getting somewhere? Hold on. Alright. Let's just braid this. And my braid, I mean twist, because we're not braiding, we're just twisting it to the side, y'all. We just twisting this. Let me. We're just twisting. Twisting and oh, hoping for the best. My arms are really tired. Okay. And we're gonna keep keep on twisting. Keep on twisting. Yeah. Okay. Oh. So this question is what are you looking for in a partner currently? Nothing. I am looking for nothing. All right, damn it, nothing. Oh my God, guys, I had picked this also up from Pattern. Oh my God, please focus. Come on, focus. I picked this up from Pattern, from Sephora, but the Brenner's Pattern. This here is so cool. It's a hairspray for your hair. I have water in here. And this is so nice, like when it sprays, look at this. It's very misty. We like a little bit of mist, y'all. We like some mist. Oh, I, I'm, I'm liking this. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm liking this hairstyle. If I could just get this to stay down. All right, my camera died again. And I'll be honest, guys. Look at this sorcery. What is this? What is this? Ah! This ain't given. Even though I just said that I was like.
liking it. Child, the hair dried up and so did the length. Mm-mm. No. <laughs> no. We ain't, we ain't doing this. I'm not, I'm not doing this. I have an idea. I have an idea. I have an idea. Okay. I know you guys been dying to see me use um, the styling cream that I recently purchased with my own coin from Sephora. And I like this so much. I bought two of them. Sis bought two of them. This is just that good. This product is probably the best curling cream I've ever purchased in my life. My life. Like, no cap. No cap, y'all. Anyway, I'm going to rehydrate the hair. Just a little rehydrate her back again. Because... Oh, that was a cute little swoop right there. Oh. My God, wait, is it? No. Anyway, focus, man, focus. All right. I'm going to add a nice little amount to my hands and apply it in my hair like this. I'm just gonna usually I work in small like amounts which is what I probably should do right now so I'm gonna work with the front first hydrate like that do a little shot. oh let me get my brush and then I'm just going to brush the tips because we want the curls defined we want the girls defined and I'm going to add some of that cream and just work my way up to the roots. Just like that. Oh, y'all see that? Oh, it's given. Look at her. And not only that, but this cream adds so much shine and sheen to the hair like it doesn't weigh your hair down at all and it doesn't have that overly oil oily feeling this is such a really 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 good product it really is i'm thoroughly enjoying it a lot so i'm just going to continue this throughout the head that's how we're going to do it just like that brush that 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 oh look at that look at that let me show you guys let me see. oh that is nice y'all see that that is nice then we gonna let her go like that period well let me actually get more up to the root because i want that thing thing yeah we want the whole root says I missed you a little bit. Let me get a little of that. Let me get a little bit of that. Okay. Yes, we like this. And it just feels like butter going through like your hands with your hair. Ah, it just feels so nice. Okay. Do, 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 do. We're going to do just do the whole thing. Y'all hear that? I love that sound. Oh, look how nice that is. Let me turn to the side for y'all. That's glorious. That's glorious. Look at that curl. Wow. 
Y'all see that? Look at how pretty. That's so pretty. I'm going to do that side like this. Like, when I tell y'all, I have no idea what is happening with this hair. I meant that. We struggling. And this is what I typically do with my hair. I struggle with it. I struggle with styling my hair. This, this, y'all seeing the real, like y'all seeing what I really go through with my hair. This is no editing right now. This is me struggling with my hair, not having any direction on what to do with it. What is this? So I think this is it for my hair. I could blow dry it right now, but honestly, I like to air dry my hair. Because I, I realize when I blow dry it, it gets puffy. And I don't want puffy. I want defined, tight curls. And then later, I'll get a pick and I'll pick it. That's what I would do. But right now, I'm just going to leave it like this. And see what happens. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I'm actually enjoying this. I really am. Yes, I might do this up until episode three or five, depending on how well this goes and more things to talk about. But um, yeah, soon I will be doing a lot more vlogs. And I know a lot of you guys want to see me do travel vlogs, which is my absolute favorite. I think I love to do travel vlogs a whole lot. So I will be doing more of those. And maybe just some day-to-day -day New York City stuff on, like, what goes on with me in New York City. Maybe, like, Mel versus New York. We'll see. Um, but, yeah. I hope you guys enjoy it. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye, guys.